Hello everyone, myself Monica Rajkumar, uh, doing my second term in the Masters of Civil Engineering in Geomatics Concentration at uh, Florida Atlantic University. This project has been carried out for the course Special Topics in Civil Engineering for summer 2021. The aim of this research project is to develop an automated model to extract the shoreline from uh, UA's imagery uh, since it's been the most important feature of the coastal landscape and then utilize the extracted shoreline to map the sea turtle stranding concentration along the shoreline. Initially, a geoprocessing tool has been developed to extract the shoreline and coastline. Coastline is the line that separates the water and shore, while shoreline is the line that separates the shore and the land. Though being commercially valuable, sea turtle strandings is a most common problem along the coastal regions since it is caused due to coal stunning, diseases from various sources, boat collisions and entanglement in fishing equipment as a result of man-made catch and marine debris. The output of the shoreline and coastline uh, extraction is then being analyzed in such a way so that the concentration of sea turtle stranding uh, can be determined precisely. The geographic region of interest for this project is the, the Jupiter Inlet Lighthouse Outstanding Natural Area, which is uh, in short called as Jelona. It is located in the northern Palm Beach County on the Atlantic coast of South Florida. Uh, Jelona is one of the parts of Bureau of Land Management's 27 million acre national conservation lands and being the only complete unit in east of Mississippi River. It is actually situated 14 miles north of West Palm Beach and the total land cover area of the Jelona region is about 120 acres of open space. A very high resolution unmanned aircraft system imagery is being used in this project which was collected using the drone with um, MicaSense multispectral sensor package during September 2020. This table here represents the specification of the sensor used in the aircraft for data collection in the Jelona region for two different uh, areas like north and south. Uh, as you see here, uh, the spectral bands available in this uh, MicaSense uh, sen camera is uh, blue, green, red, red edge and near infrared. The pre-processing of the data was done using the PIX4D software which resulted in the ortho imagery. So this is the north of Jelona and south of Jelona, which was <coughs> collected separately. The sea turtle stranding points uh, for uh, Florida was acquired from the Florida Geographic uh, Data Library, FGDL, which is a metadata explorer website. The stranding points of sea turtle from the year 1986 till 2017 was found in the downloaded layer which was actually added to the FGDL Metadata Explorer um, on 17th May of 2020 by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission of uh, Fish and Wildlife Research Institute. So now since the data is ready, uh, we are just moving on to the tool that are being developed. Uh, firstly, the geoprocessing tool to extract the shoreline and coastline was developed using uh, ArcPy, which is available in the ArcGIS Pro. This is how the tool looks like. It takes the five band rasters input with uh, mandatory green and uh, near infrared because that is how uh, the NTWI is generated, which we'll be seeing later. And the output of this particular tool is waterline and shoreline uh, vector features. So waterline is the coastline that we saw. Um, the methodology behind this tool is uh, first it takes the raster input which is a five band imagery and then we create the uh, normalized difference water index uh, using green and red edge bands. Actually NDWI uses near infrared and a short wave infrared or green and in near infrared brands but for this project uh, modified NDWI is being used. Uh, using green and red edge bands which gave better results than the other combinations. Once NDWI is created then thresholding for the raster is being uh, carried out like to 0 and 1 in order to uh, pick the water and the land separately. After that smoothening process is being carried out uh, in which the noise of the imagery will be re reduced. Uh, after that the raster has been converted to polygon 
and then the uh, larger area water polygon is being chosen from that and that polygon is converted to line uh, finally we'll be having more unnecessary lines like linear range and also we have to remove all those lines from the extracted output so that those lines are being removed and then the uh, uh, certain lines will be splitted so all the those lines has to be merged together so that we get a single shoreline and coastline and then the largest line feature is chosen from that output uh, finally we have to just uh, uh, collect the line feature of the particular area which is of interest which is the Gilona AOI in this case uh, that is how we use the Gilona AOI shapefile to uh, extract the shoreline finally all the intermediate results has been removed from the database um, yeah so this is the overall workflow of the extraction tool once this is done we get the result of coastline and the shoreline so the blue is the coastline which is the waterline and the red color is uh, the shoreline so let's see in more detail view So this is the coastline of the north area of Gilona, as you see here. Uh, this is the south part, and here you can clearly see how the water uh, has been, you know, exactly differentiated from the land part. And this is the south imagery, like additional uh, data. So as you see here, uh, it's been, you know, exactly demarcated the water. Moving on to the shoreline, for north it looks like this. Since this is the you know, shore and land separation, you can exactly see the vegetation, how it's been uh, captured. And for the south part, you can see it in the red line here. So here you can clearly see how the shore has been uh, demarcated. This uh, slide shows the combination of you no know, waterline and shoreline, so you can uh, visually see how different uh, both lines are. So the second part of the project is like once the shoreline has been extracted from the automated tool, uh, it is then uh, used to map the sea turtle stranding concentration along the shoreline using two different analyses which is kernel density and optimized hotspot analysis. The workflow of this uh, model is initially uh, two shorelines have been extracted for north and south separately. So that two has to be merged first so that we get the merged shoreline. And then for that merged shoreline, 0.5 miles of uh, buffer has been executed uh, so that within the buffer, the intersecting sea turtle concentration points alone like sea turtle uh, stranding points alone can be extracted from that and those uh, stranding points is then given as input for both kernel density and the optimized hotspot analysis to get the concentration map so this is the output of kernel density analysis so what is kernel density analysis yeah Taking a known quantity of any certain phenomenon and spreading them across a particular landscape at every location and establishing a spatial relationship uh, based on the location of uh, measured quantities is often termed as density analysis. But there are three types of density analysis, namely point, line and kernel density. The density of the quantity around each cell is calculated based on a specific neighborhood uh, in case of point and line density analysis but in case of uh, kernel density uh, it spreads out the known quantity for each cell from the point location in other words kernel density helps in calculating dense of point and line features around each output raster cell based on the available neighborhood uh, features so so uh, through this map you can clearly see that the sea turtle stranding points is very less uh, along the shoreline Similarly, op optimized hotspot analysis is also carried out. Uh, e through this also, we you know uh, get to know that there is uh, not much number of uh, sea turtle standings along the uh, AI. 
So what is optimized hotspot analysis? It, it, it actually works based on the calculation of uh, Gedu's Odgi statistic for each cell or a feature in a given data set. This actually results in two outputs, uh, which is z-scores and uh, p-values. A uh, z-score represents the standard deviation while uh, p-value represents the probability. These two results actually help in establishing a spatial relationship of uh, clustering concentration and it is directly proportional to the values of z-scores. That is, smaller the z-score values, intents of cold spot clusters will be more and higher the z-score values, intents of hot spot clusters will be more. So based on the confidence level of a cell, uh, z-score and p-value is um, giving a better output uh, either on uh, high or low values of clustering. So this is how the overall project, like uh, the first approach is uh, getting the extracted shoreline and then use that particular shoreline to map the sea turtle uh, stranding concentration using kernel density and optimized hotspot analysis. So what will be the future scope of this project? Uh, the extracted output of this project can be further performed uh, you know, in changed action uh, of the shoreland and in computing the volume of the soil erosion using a series of uh, data. This project can also be further extended to extract the whole coast or shore region from the given input high resolution imagery. The developed model can be modified in such a way so that it generates uh, an accurate extraction of coastline and shoreline even when a three band imagery is being used uh, and also certain deep learning models can be uh, explored like UNET or uh, mask RCNN like any kind of deep learning models can be implemented so that the extraction process will be of more uh, uh, higher accuracy. Through the generated uh, sea turtle concentration map uh, a further analysis related to the threats of the sea turtle can be carried out and a study can be done to understand its behavior pattern due to the climatic change effects along the shore of any region which can be extended. So these are the references used in this project and other than this all the other references are being mentioned in the project report detailing. Thank you.